Welcome to EdgeCam Basics. Before we even open EdgeCam, there are two things that we have to do in order for EdgeCam to work correctly. And that is to install the post processor, which is the translator for our ProLite mill. And we also have to install the configuration file so that all the students' buttons show up where you want them to, so everybody has the same screen in class. To do that, I've saved the two files. Uh, called, I renamed it to ChurdConfig. Um, it's called Project Lead the Way, pltw.config, in the ProLite 1000, uh, .mp, .mcp. The ProLite 1000 is the translator, and the Churd is the config file. Again, like I said, this will be named PLTW when you download it from the Virtual Academy. You can download both of these files from the Virtual Academy, and I've saved them in this folder. What you need to do to install those is go to my computer, local disk, navigate to the programs folder, navigate to the edge cam folder, the cam folder, and let's install the post processor first. To do that, you have to open the mock def or machine definitions folder, and you'll see these other files in here. All you have to do is drag the ProLite 1000 MCP into that folder and that's all you have to do for installation for that. To install the configuration file, navigate back to the EdgeCam CAM folder and navigate down to support and mill profile and drag your pltw.config file into that folder. That's all that's necessary for the install to happen. Now when we open EdgeCam, there will be certain things in place and you'll never have to worry about it again. This is a one-shot deal. You do it once and you're done. Now that we've installed the post and the configuration file, we're ready to open EdgeCam. And once you've opened EdgeCam, you'll notice that it looks very similar to Inventor. You have your menus, you have your icons, you have a feature browser over here, and up in the upper right hand corner you have design mode and you have manufacturing mode. EdgeCam automatically opens in design mode so that you can do a few things. Once you're here, what you want to do is say file and open your project. In this case I'm going to open an inventor project that I just built in inventor and I'm going to call that in by double clicking on it. That will open up my part in design mode and then I'll be able to work on it while here. In design mode, here it is, and in order to see the object you might have to right click and rotate just like CNC motion. And here's my project. I want to be able to machine this. Uh, before I go any further though, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I am using my Project Lead the Way configuration file. And to do that, click in any empty space on a toolbar, right click, go to Profile, Mill Profile, and you should find the Project Lead the Way configuration file that you installed earlier. Click on it, and all the buttons will go back to where they belong. And this is a good thing to do because then now all of your students, when you tell them to click on a button, all their buttons are in the same place as your buttons and everybody knows where they are. If at any point a student loses a menu, a toolbar, or they X out of a feature, or they close something accidentally, or they mess something up, it's very easy to fix. You just right click, profile, mill profile, and choose your project lead the way sim config file and it'll put everything back where it belongs. So now that we have that done, these are the buttons that we're going to use. This toolbar right here is our main toolbar and this is what the Project Lead the Way Sim uh, configuration file puts here for us. It's really easy to use and there's only a couple things that we have to do while we're in design mode. The first thing I want to do is I want to show you how to move the buttons to put them in an order that might make more sense to your students. If you right click on that toolbar and say customize, it'll allow you to grab this icon on the end and move it 
to the left. And that's just an example of how you can customize your toolbars. It's very customizable. So these icons are now in the order in which we're going to do things. This is the auto stock icon. This is the create CPL or PRZ icon. And this is the feature finder. And now we're all set. We're ready to start doing some design to get this ready to manufacture. Now that we're in the design mode, the first thing that we need to do is put some stock around our part. It's very easy to do on a rectangular piece of stock. Again, if you want to rotate or move your part, right click and move your mouse around on your desktop. The first thing we want to do while we're in design mode, here's our design mode toolbar, the one that we're going to use most. The first thing we're going to do is auto stock and EdgeCam has an auto stock feature that if you have a rectangular piece of stock just by clicking on the auto stock feature you notice that a green box appears around your part that represents the piece of stock that you're going to machine later on students sometimes will click on this two or three times uh, wondering if it's done or not the best place to check is over in your features browser and you can see that oops I've done it three times if you've ever done that and you want to get rid of a couple of these, you can right click and delete. And the nice thing about EdgeCam is there are always more than one way to do things. If you find a different way to do than what you see here, great. If it works for you, fine. There's lots of different ways to do all of these different things. So now we're done with the first step, which is to auto stock our part. The next step in design mode is to make sure that the CPL, which is what it's called in EdgeCam, and for the students, uh, the CPL can be equated to PRZ, part reference zero. When we manufacture this part in the mill, we're going to make XYZ zero. We want it right here in the bottom left corner, just like we did with our initials. If we look carefully, we notice that the CPL is not where it belongs. That icon represents PRZ and should be in the upper corner right here on this part, but it's not. So what we have to do next is fix it so that it is. That's the second icon and the second step is to create the right CPL or PRZ for our part. So we click on this icon right here, the create CPL, and we tell it that we want to move the origin with it, so we check this checkbox. There are many ways to do this. The easiest way that I found to do this most of the time is name it, and I tell my students to name it new so that they can find it again. And then also I can tell if they made a mistake and didn't make their part right in Inventor. If their CPL is named new, they've, they've built it incorrectly in Inventor. And then I tell it to define it by going through three points. So in this box, when I create a CPL, I check origin, I give it a name, and then I say through three points and I say OK. And If I look in the bottom left corner EdgeCam is asking me questions and if I ever need to know what I need to do next I check this bottom corner and it will tell me what to do. It says define the points on the plane. When you use three points here's how it works. You choose where you want the origin, the end of the x-axis, then the end of the y-axis, and then back on the origin. So you have to click four times. And if you notice, it's a counterclockwise right triangle. So I'm going to do that. And to do that, make sure that you get the yellow box appearing around it. You see the yellow box appearing around my cursor? That tells me I've got the right point. And then I'm going to do the positive X, positive Y, and then back on the origin. And then I zoom in. I use the scroll wheel, and I can zoom in. And I see that the green arrow is pointing in the positive Y, the red arrow is pointing in the positive X, and the blue arrow is pointing in the positive Z. At this point, I have my PRZ set correctly, my CPL is all set, so I'm ready to go on to the next step. What I tell the students to do is after they get something correct, go to File and Save. And do this every single time you get something correct so that if something goes wrong and EdgeCam crashes, 
you don't lose all of your work. That's the end of the second step in the design mode. The last step in design mode is to find all the features. Everything that you see on the face of this block that we're going to machine are considered features. And to start off, we're going to let EdgeCam find all the features for us. And that's done with this icon right here called Feature Finder. It's pretty much automatic and it works almost every single time. For all the stuff that we're going to do in Sim class, it should work just fine. So if we click on Feature Finder, it's going to give us a whole bunch of check boxes that we need to check. The first thing that I do is make sure that it's going to find holes, so make sure that this is checked, and I make the maximum diameter 0.5. The reason I do that is because the largest tool that I have to drill a hole is a half inch end mill, therefore I make the maximum diameter uh, 0.5. Then I come down here and I check 2D pocket, 2D boss, 3D pocket, and 3D boss. This finds most of the features that I'm going to need to use while I'm working on my part. So once I have this set up like this, I can click on OK, and that's modal also. That will stay, um, that, those checkboxes will stay checked for as long as you use EdgeCam as the same user on your computer. And I look over here and I'll see that I have my part in my browser, I have my new CPL or PRZ, and on that, that CPL, on that plane, I have found these different features. And if I hover over them, I can look at my screen and I can see which are which. I can click on them and I see that that boss is the edge around the whole block. And I tell students a boss is something that you can drag a tool around to create something. Whereas a pocket is something that is machine material that gets machined out. Here's a pocket, here's a pocket, and this is something that can be machined out, and that green line would be the boundary. Whereas a boss, the green line is something that you make a tool follow. And I also have this 2D boss, which is just the inside edge of our groove, and then I have a set of blind holes. And notice that if the holes are the same size, one of the checkboxes that we checked earlier said that if the holes are the same size, do them all together. So that's exactly what it did. It's all, it seems to be all one feature. And then we have all this on our stock. That's really all we have to do while we're in design mode. And just a review, auto stock, check PRZ, and if it's not correct, create a new PRZ or CPL, and then find the features. Once those three things are done, we're ready to enter manufacturing mode. And now we're ready to enter manufacturing mode. If you remember, to do that, right now we're in design mode. Now we want to switch to manufacturer mode. This is where we're going to make tool paths for CNC motion to actually cut our part. So we click on manufacturer mode, and it asks us some questions. You can name the sequence if you want, or you can leave it blank. Make sure the discipline says mill, and make sure that the chosen machine tool is the ProLite 1000. Do you remember when we installed the post processor earlier, before we even opened EdgeCam? This is where this comes from, and it has to say ProLite 1000 here, and this has to say mill. And if you changed PRZ, it should say whatever you named it here. You have to check this every time you enter manufacturing mode to make sure that these three boxes are correct. Once you've checked that, and this is modal too, I found, um, if you use the same machine, once this is set up, you don't ever have to change it again. It's good to have the kids check it though. Once you're all set, you say OK. The first time you open EdgeCam and it goes into manufacturer mode, you'll get a bunch of text boxes right here in the middle of the screen that ask you questions. What do you want to name this? What do you want to name that? What do you want to name the other? I think there are seven or eight of them and you just click through them. That isn't anything that we're going to be using. We're going to keep it simple. It's a report generator, and those are titles for the report. So once you click through all those, that's modal also. EdgeCam will remember your choices for the next time you come in, and we don't ever have to worry about that. Notice that in manufacturing mode that 
our box over here has changed from features to sequences. Sequences are sets of steps in the manufacturing process. If you want to see what features were chosen earlier in design mode, you can click on the features tab. And this is the sequence mode. This is what we're going to use while we're manufacturing. Now that we're in manufacturing mode, we have to decide what we're going to do with our part. On this particular part, we have three different operations that we need to perform. One is this pocket. We have to rough out this material. We have to get rid of all the stuff inside this pocket. The next thing we have to do is this profile. We want to put this groove around the outside edge. And another thing that we want to do is drill these holes. So there really are three operations that we want to do. The first one that we're going to do is the roughing. You can do these in any order. And remember, there are more than one way to do things in EdgeCam. If you find a different way, that's great. I'm just going to show you one way to do it. So we want to rough out this pocket. To pick an operation, what we do is we go up to the Operations menu. We click on Operation, and we say uh, Roughing. We want to rough that pocket out. And remember to look in the bottom left corner. EdgeCam is asking us a question. It says, Digitize Geometry to Machine. There are two ways to find the geometry to define our roughing. And we can click on this 2D pocket right here, and then EdgeCam will rough it. Or we could go to the Features tab and pick it here. Sometimes when you get a complicated part, it's easier to come over here and pick the, the part, that, the feature that you want to machine from this. I'll click on 2D Pocket, and you'll notice it turns green or turns a different color. It's still asking me the question, digitize geometry to machine. Students will forget that once you've picked all the parts that you want to machine, because you can pick more than one at a time in EdgeCam, you have to hit the, hit the Enter key. And it asks us a second question. It says, select boundary entities. This is a really simple pocket, so we're going to have EdgeCam uh, select the boundary for us. So we hit Return again. That gives us our roughing operation box, and here it is. So really, we're going to do a very simple roughing operation. The only thing you have to do at this point is choose the tool that you want to use for this. And go down to Tool Store and find the tool that you want to use. I have a special tool library all set up, so I only have a certain number of tools to choose from. You probably have lots. Just pick any mill that you want to use to rough that pocket. We have to use an end mill because it's a flat bottom pocket. If we use a ball mill, we'll get a rounded edge. We don't want that. So I'm going to pick the biggest end mill that will fit in that pocket. In this case, it's a half inch end mill. So I'm going to select that tool by clicking on it and saying select. You have to choose the tool from the tool store first, then go through and change the feed rate, the plunge, the speed, and the tool number, don't forget to put the tool number in here. This is very. This will be very important later. And then you can click on OK. Some of the other tabs are depth. Depth says zero, but EdgeCam determines the depth from the part that you brought in. So we're going to leave depth at zero, and I've got my cut increment set at a quarter of an inch. Uh, that might be a little bit too much. So I can change that and say make my depth of cut 0.125. Now EdgeCam will take that out an eighth of an inch at a time and then drop another eighth of an inch and continue until the pocket is completely finished. And then I can say OK. Now I'll see my tool. I'll see the yellow. In my case this, is, this yellow is the tool path that will take that out and you can see if I zoom in that there are multiple paths. It takes out one section, drops an eighth of an inch, another section, drops an eighth of an inch. No math is required. EdgeCam will figure out how much to take each time so that the pocket is the depth that it needs to be. If you have a big tool holder showing, you can use this icon, and this is our toolbar. These are the tools that we're going to use in manufacturing mode. You can use this to change what you see on your screen. I like to see the tool, so I've got my tool and my tool path. And what I can do 
is I can now rapid result and see what happens. If I click on rapid result, I get a simulator. When I click on the play button, what I should see, and I have to turn my block over, I see that I have my pocket, and my pocket is all cut out. And because it happens so quickly, I really can't see that. It, it happens very, very quickly. I can change my speed here, and sometimes that doesn't slow it down enough. I'll have my students use simulation mode. Click on simulation, say OK, and I can see it. It's much slower in this window. And then I can also come down here and play it back and see exactly what it does and stop at any point so that I can see what it's doing. And at this point, it's interesting to show kids that do you want to write the code to make that tool do that? Because now that they've written code, they find that, geez, I don't want to write the code to do that. Let's let EdgeCam do it for us. And then they start to realize how powerful EdgeCam software really is. Another thing, when you open up the rapid result window, it's a separate pro program. The simulator is separate. After you click play and you see your part, you make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. Make sure you close that window. And once you get it right, make sure that you save your part. Go to File and then click on Save. Because now you're all set, it works. Save it in case something happens in EdgeCan. Now remember, sequences, if I ever want to change anything in my sequence, I can double click on this, on the sequence, say OK, and I can go back in here and I can edit this. For instance, for tooling, let's suppose I wanted to change it to a quarter inch end mill, but I don't see it here. If I want to see all my tools, I click the filters off and I'll see all my end mills because I clicked end mill. If I want to see all of them, I can click on uh, ball. I see my ball mills. I see my end mills. I only want end mills, so I'm going to click off the ball mills. And let's say I want to do that with a quarter inch end mill, and I select it. Again, make sure your feed rate, your plunge, your speed, and your tool number are correct in this window before going on. And then you can say OK. And notice now my tool paths have changed to match that particular tool. I can go to rapid result and I can play it again. And I know I have to flip this over to see the other side. That's OK. There's my pocket. And my pocket works. Choose the tool and you're all set. So really, in review, when you're choosing an operation, the only thing you really have to do is first choose the feature that you want to perform the operation on, and then go to the Operations menu and choose the operation. Once in the Operations menu, all you have to remember to do is get the right tool, get the tool that you want to use. Make sure it's a tool that you have in your library. All right, now that we've done our pocket, let's try a profile. So let's make this groove around the outside edge and let's do it by following the boss with a tool. That's the easiest way to do it. If we were to pocket that, it would take more time as we'd have to choose a really small tool and make it go back and forth or up and down in that, that pocket to do it many times. The easiest way to do this is to take the right size tool, bring it through that groove, and make it do, make it, do it in one pass, maybe with a couple different uh, passes because of depth, but make it just follow that line all the way around. And to do that, we go to the operations menu because it's an operation. And let's choose profiling. And let's pick that boss and make the tool follow that boss. Remember, once you've picked everything that you need to pick, EdgeCam is still asking for more to do. Make sure that you're, when you're done picking your profile, you hit return. And again, it's asking, do you want to pick the boundaries? Let's let EdgeCam do it and say no by hitting return. And here's our profile operation box. Let's leave everything alone except let's go to the tooling and pick the right tool. Remember, pick the tool before you change these numbers. Go to find and I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill. Uh, pick any eighth inch end mill that you have in your library. 
and select it. Once you've selected it, you want to go back through, if you don't have what I have here, go back through and pick a valid feed rate, a valid plunge, a spindle speed, and make sure you put the tool number in there. Again, that's very important. And then you should be all set. Remember depth, it says zero, but Ed EdgeCam is calculating that. And we're going to leave our cut increment at 0.125. And let's say OK. And now if we look carefully and we zoom in, you'll see the tool path. And you'll see that it does it in a couple passes because of the depth. And again, the purple is the tool path for this. And I can go into rapid result and check and see what it does. Remember, I have to turn this over. Uh-oh. Looks pretty good, except I have this little snipe on the end. And if that happens, it's really easy to fix. Remember to close your simulator. Let's edit the profiling operation by double-clicking on it or right-clicking and say Edit. Say OK. And what that is, is that's the lead radius. EdgeCam automatically puts a lead radius by default. So if you don't want that little snipe in there to come in from the side to do this, let's make lead radius zero and say OK. Now let's simulate it again in our simulator and see what happens. There we go. Perfect. And it made it in a couple passes. And again, what I can do is I can just go to simulation mode and say OK. And I can make it do it right here on my screen. There's my pocket. And there's my profile. And then I can use this arrow. And I can make it go through step by step so I can see exactly what it does. And that's all there is to a profile. And again, to edit either of these, right click, open it up, and make changes. When you're all done, your changes will be reflected on the screen over here. That's all you need to do to make this profile happen. The last step to making our part is to drill these three holes. And to do that in EdgeCam, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Operations. And we're going to choose the operation called Hole for Milling. This allows us to drill a hole with an end mill. Remember that it has to be a center cutting end mill. So we choose holes for milling. And again, you can go to features over here, choose the blind holes here. Make sure my sequences are showing still. Or I can just click on one of the holes. Notice it highlights all three. Once you're done selecting points, and I am, hit the return key and you'll get your whole operation. Notice there are a lot of different things that you can choose, a lot of boxes to change. Let's just stick with a blind hole and let's just go straight to the roughing tab and we're just going to drill this. We're going to send the drill into the hole, drill it, move to the next, drill it, move to the next, drill it. So really all we have to do in the roughing tab is go to the tool store and find the right tool. It's going to say, hey, we don't have a drill to do that with. But that's okay, we're not going to use a drill. So say, no, I don't want to add a new tool. And it says, no match is found. Let's turn off our filters and choose just our end mills. You'll get a lot of them, but we know that the size of this hole is a quarter inch. So I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill to drill that hole. I click on my quarter inch end mill and say select. Then what you need to do is you need to make sure that your plunge feed, depending upon the tool that you chose, make sure that your plunge feed, your spindle speed, and your tool number, again, that's very important, make sure that all of those are something that your machine can handle. Um, I just use a plunge feed of 10, uh, spindle speed of 3500, and in my library it's tool number 4. So I'm going to say OK. And really, that's it. It'll now drill my holes. And to check that out, I go to my Rapid Result tab, flip my block over, and hit Play. And there are my three holes. So my part is now essentially finished. 
I've used three different tools, I've done three different operations, and I've made a complete part, all in EdgeCam. Another neat feature with EdgeCam, which you can do, let's say for instance, I like to drill do the whole cycle first. So I can take my whole operation in my sequence tab and move it to the top. And then again, maybe I want to do my roughing last. I can move that to the bottom. Try not to mess around with these yet. These are more advanced features. Let's just keep those closed up right now. Let's see what happens now when I do my rapid result. Notice how it drilled my holes first. It did my profile and then it did my pocket. So I can do that right here in EdgeCam and change my order of operations. Now that we have a complete part uh, manufactured in EdgeCam, you've done everything that you need to. There's only one step left uh, in EdgeCam before we can actually manufacture it on our mill. The last step to manufacturing a part in EdgeCam is to actually generate the NC code. So don't forget to go to File and Save. When you save your file, it automatically saves it as the same name as your inventor file with the .epf and in the same place. So it's to your advantage to have the kids make a project folder and put their inventor part in there and then all the other files will fall into place. So I'm going to say save. I've saved my EdgeCam file. In that folder now, which is right here, I have a EPF file and an IPT file. What I need to do now is generate the code. And again, here's our toolbar for Project Lead the Way. Here's the toolbar that we're going to use the icons from. We click on Generate the NC Code. We can give it a CNC name. We can give it a job name. I'm going to leave those blank and say OK. And it asks us one question. And that one question is what's your name? We'll type in my name. I'm going to say OK. And then EdgeCam generates an NC code file with all the code to make that part. This is the part that really amazes students because now there's the code. We can take that code into CNC motion and actually machine the part using our mill. A couple things, they're going to have to look at this code and understand it. I make the students remark some of it so that I know that they know what all the codes do and I make them go to the end and make sure that they put in a go to safe position at the end uh, so that when they're done machining the tool comes away from the part. Uh, one issue too that we have in my classroom is that this window does not appear when I click that button. It says that there's an error and all I need to do if I get that error is I go even with the error if I go into the flange folder I see that there is an NC file called at flange. That's the file that I have to open when I try to put it into CNC motion at the end. So all in all, those are the steps that it takes to manufacture a part using EdgeCam. Three different tools, three different operations, all one part, all one code, and now it's machinable on your ProLite 1000.